to round one of the Triton Showers Irish National Rally Championship, the Mayo stages based in Ballina. Eight stages ahead of the cruise today in really tricky conditions. Buckle up, the Triton Showers National Rally Championship is back. Last year's titanic tussle between Josh Moffat and Callum Devine went down to the eight-round series' very last stage. And with a bulging entry list of 150 crews set to take on 2024's opening Mayo Stages rally, the buzz around Ireland's one-day asphalt events is simply sensational. Not only is Mayo's lineup bursting in quantity, but the high quality of drivers, co-drivers and perfectly prepared rally cars is showcased throughout each and every class and category. Irish people love their Triton showers. So it may come as surprising that we're asking you to... Get out of the shower! <laughs> Naturally, being a Triton shower, you won't want to. And so we're gently reminding you to save water by taking the Triton 5-minute challenge. So, tails at the ready? You'll feel as good when you get out of the shower as you did when you were in it. Triton, for a cleaner conscience. Based in beautiful Ballina, the Mayo Stages Rally offered eight challenging stages to its eagerly awaiting competitors. After last year's success, Josh Moffat has now claimed a hat-trick of national championship crowns and could become the first driver to win the title four times. Moffat and co-driver Keith Moriarty won the last Mayo Stages Rally in 2022, but a change to Citroen machinery in 2024 has left the question, can they continue that fearless form away from their usual Hyundai. Oh, yeah, I suppose every every kilometre we're probably learning something at this stage, but uh, yeah, look at uh, every rally's going to be slightly different and there's going to be more to learn all the time. So uh, yeah, look at hopefully, hopefully it goes well. Desi Henry and Declan Boyle may be missing Moffat's recent record of rally wins, but they're well accustomed to their Citroen C3s heading to the national opener. Yeah, it's really a continu continuation on from Galway. Uh, stages are quite slippy, shiny, you know, I think of quite a bit of mud been pulled out on the stages, so it'll be interesting, you know, our pace was okay in Galway and uh, look, we were in a, a good battle with Joyce, so hopefully we can continue the battle tomorrow and, and hopefully maybe get one up on them. Yes, yeah, a good variety, uh, not, not bad stages, but again, something like Galway, you know, it's going to be tricky too, the end of stage one there too is a driving match, so I would ship better away. As if there wasn't enough on the line for Citroen's leading contenders, a €5,500 prize fund was on offer in Mayo as part of the C3 Rally 2 trophy. 2017 national champion Sam Moffat starts third on the road in his Hyundai i20 Rally 2. The determined drivers had to play bridesmaid to his younger brother in recent years, but we'll be hoping a shift in focus to the national championship in 2024 helps his cause. Yeah, look, looking forward to the first round here, the national. Uh, always enjoy national events around Ireland and uh, good stages this weekend. Big push on, and hopefully, I can stay with the top boys. We got to see the stages in all kind of conditions this morning, from running water right down to a dry road again. So, look at it. Probably going to be wet tonight, dry up in the morning. That's what's predicting. So, uh, hopefully, a wet tire in the morning. See how it goes, and try and uh, try and go for a bit of a push. Daniel Cronin, Michael Boyle and David Guest brought Volkswagens and Fords to the party as well as over 20 cutting-edge Rally 2 cars came to the banks of the River Moy fishing for early national championship success. As usual, a host of top two-wheel drive cars flooded Mayo's Park Fermi with a vast array of class winners and highly tuned cars braced for the eight-stage championship opener. Mark Alcorn and Damien Tourish led the way in a brace of Ford Escort Mark IIs. Gary McPhillips, Jonathan Pringle and Colin O'Donoghue added to the lengthy list of challengers, while Michael Carbon brought his Class 14 Mark II after switching from his giant-killing Mitsubishi. And you could race. Kevin Gallagher is not here in the Darien, obviously, but uh, there's plenty others. Oh, either you have the man behind me here and the man over there. and 
you have the young tuner there in the four-wheel drive. And, uh, you have plenty of good good men here. Uh, uh, anybody can pick it up here today. It depends who has the cleanest run and who's uh, who's brave and gets and gets away with their wee mistakes. And, you know, uh, we, you could have a fast run and lose it all in the last last hair bunch. So uh, it's just who's going to be lucky today. I think times can be difficult, all right, hey, but I'll go out and get settled on here. I'm not uh, there's no wild pressure on today now. For it's been a while, so no, I'm looking forward to it. No, look, energy here today is phenomenal again. Uh, I'd say it'll be. Just competitive and exciting as last year, hopefully. Uh, look, championships have been great for us from a brand point of view, so look, it can be as good this year, we'll be delighted. Yeah, it should be good, yeah. Joe, you know, it's the first time us doing the, well, we did one national round last year, but you know, we're trying to do all the rounds this year, so see how we're going, it should be good. Yeah, a little bit. We did a rally in Yorkshire back home last weekend, it was similar, very tricky, so yeah, we didn't get on very well, to be honest, but yeah, hopefully it should be better this weekend. Yeah, no, the first stage is definitely going to be challenging in the morning, um, the final few okay, but um, you barely get the win of these R5 cars down through it, so um, if it blocks at all, I'd say it'd definitely be gone for the day, but. No, looking forward to it there now. The second stage is a lot more cleaner, but um, a lot more challenging as well, I think. Uh, yeah, look, there's still a lot to learn, so we just get out tomorrow and learn as much as we can. But hopefully we're aiming to be on the pace straight away, so hope for the best now and stay out in front. Just have to get around them. That's what it's all about. Um, finish will be a big help, so just about getting the mileage, you know. Ready to go, yeah. No, the stages, they're fab, but they're very guttery and dirty, so it's just about keeping a steady head tomorrow. and. Just getting through them, um, look, you need to finish at the end of the day and consistency is key, especially whenever you're doing the championship. So, you know, um, look, I'll push on and see what I can do, but yeah, I'm just happy to be here. It's my first tarmac rally, so I'm really excited, ready, ready to go. Motorsport Ireland launched the Junior Marshal and Official Training Program during Mayo Stages Rally's opening ceremony. MI Rally Academy members Aoife Raftery and William Crichton were also announced as the organisation's latest road safety ambassadors. Absolutely, it's a great day for Motorsport Ireland. We're here in Ballina at the first round of the National Championship where we are launching our youth in motorsport. So from the age of 12 to 18, we are now enrolling marshals and from the age of 16 to 18, enrolling junior officials. So it's an incredible step forward for Motorsport Ireland. It's part of our strategic plan and it's all about embracing ourselves for the future and future-proofing our, future our sport to ensure that the youth are involved. Also here this evening, we're launching our road safety ambassadors, William Creighton and Aoife Rafferty, who will be our ambassadors for Motorsport Ireland as we make our way around the country, ensuring that the race in its place is the main message that is going out from all our events. Reigning national champions Josh Moffat and Keith Moriarty were first to face Mayo's 14.8 km Brakwancha opener. Stage one was wet and mucky, and its shiny road surface was set to cause some early Sunday morning chaos. Moffat powered his fresh looking C3 into stage one, oblivious to the pandemonium to follow over the next 20 minutes. The Monaghan man arrived at a square left, leaving what he thought was more than enough time to slow down for an innocent looking corner, but his Citroen refused to stop on the slippery surface and bullnosed into a round bail on the outside of the corner. Had Moffat got away with the early moment? He hadn't. A cracked radiator left steam billowing out of the Citroen's bonnet and just like that, his rally was over. Next up were Desi Henry and Stuart Loudon, who hit the same junction 30 seconds later. Their Citroen skated over the shiny tar and the subsequent impact left the C3 stranded with steering damage. Sam Moffat quickly followed in his Hyundai and could have fallen victim to the same misfortune had he not spotted Henry's stricken Citroen. He was the first driver to arrive at the stage end and was quick to warn of just how slippery that corner was. Moffat was anxious that there would be a continuation of Stage 1's dramas as he opened the road in Ballantubber. His second fastest time was enough to retain the rally lead after Mayo's opening loop and reset his focus in service. Daniel Cronin and Donegal Burke were next to complete Stage 1. He shows us just how slippery the conditions were on the opening test as he also had trouble stopping on that shiny square left. 100 shiny dome cut square right tight water on the inside five to wipe percent okay 150 
Danger ahead, water breaking, middle over crest, be stopped. Very shiny, only 40, very shiny, square left, use the road. Daniel's drama didn't end there either. He got his polo stuck in a soft verge near the end of the stage that cost last year's Wexford Stages Rally winner a bundle of time, falling 28.7 seconds short of Moffat's benchmark. Five. Cronin responded to their stage one mistakes by setting the fastest time on the succeeding Ballon Tubber test. Cronin was an impressive 8.9 seconds faster than anyone over the 14.8 kilometres to head back into Mayo's service area just under 20 seconds behind Sam Moffat and James O'Reilly. In fact, Moffat's nearest challenger on Brackwancha was Armaz Marty Toner, who was making only his second appearance in a two and a half litre Proton Satria. Seated 25th, Toner and co driver Ben Tegart showed several Rally 2 cars how to handle the slippery opener to set the second fastest time. Marty was the surprise package of stage one, but dropped four places on Mayo's second test after getting stuck behind Seamus Leonard's Ford Fiesta from the stage's third junction. Leonard struck roadside railings at the start of Ballantubber, but survived without major damage. The inconsistent grip throughout Stage 1 wiped out half of Mayo's top 10. Declan Boyle was forced to retire on the opener, while son Michael wrecked the rear of his polo when he found zero grip on the same corner that ended Moffat and Henry's hopes. He did well though to flick the R5 around to avoid an even more expensive repair bill. Somehow he managed to crawl through the rest of the stage while trying not to hold up Paul Barrett in his C3. Jumping an incredible five places on stage two, Tommy Doyle and Liam Moynihan now find themselves in the top three, 14.6 seconds behind Cronin. Their third place position was far from a given, however, with five crews within 8.1 seconds of that final spot on the podium. Aidan Ray and Peter Ward completed the opening loop in fourth, 0.6 seconds ahead of Jason McSweeney and Liam Brennan's stealth mode Skoda. Eddie Doherty was now seventh overall in his Skoda, 1.2 seconds behind Toner and four tenths of a second ahead of the hard charging Citroen of James Ford and Neil Shanks. Ford was fighting back from time loss on Mayo's opener after his co-driver's intercom refused to work on the troublesome test. Mark Alcorn inherited the two-wheel drive lead on stage two after some unusually cautious driving on the gripless roads. He was ninth overall after early two-wheel drive pace setter Colin O'Donoghue was forced to retire from an early 6.3 second lead with electrical issues. Jonathan Pringle was the fastest in a Ford Escort on Mayo's second test, closing the gap to Alcorn to three and a half seconds after spinning twice on the opening stage. Slowing three right, only 40, late, five right, plus plus, slippy up wet. And a five left, in plus, 170. Danger crest into five right minus. Five right minus. Danger 170. Kick jump, hold, and two left in into crest dip. And a short four right over crest plus in and. John O'Dugan was 7.7 .7 seconds behind Pringle. Dugan was left in despair at the end of stage one as he had to stop during the stage to demiss his windscreen. Still, it could have been much worse. Damien Tourish started the day on the wrong tyres and suffered an overshoot on stage one. Making a fight back on Ballon Tubber, Tourish overcooked a left-hander, sliding his Ford Escort off the road and down into the brambles. Certainly not the splash he was hoping to make on the opening loop. 
It was one of those mornings. The unforgiving rose around Ballina had swallowed up any sort of mistake. Sam, two stages down, it's been a war of attrition there. Yeah, look, it's tricky conditions out there. We were quite lucky, I would say, to see another car off in front of us. We kind of knew there was something uh, dangerous ahead or slippy ahead, so we we took precaution and it seemed to take three of the top four anyway. And um, they look at it and it's like that through the rest of the stages and we're going to try and, now that we've been round the two of them, we kind of know where the bad parts are and we'll try and push on. Um, fast on the se on the second stage was Daniel Cronin, of course. It it's going to be hard to judge your pace today. Yeah, it is. Look at the... You can take time where you want to take risk, um, but as I say, we've been around them the two stages now. We kind of know where the conditions are, good and bad, and we'll just have to try and push where we can and caution where we have to. Daniel, a very tricky start to the Triton Showers National Rally Championship. You had a lot of drama on the on the first stage, and then you came back with a fast time on the second one. Yeah, first one, like it, it was silly by me, really. I, I was meant to just go in and behave myself, but no, we we had two kind of class or timely moments, like you know, which is annoying. But look. We had a clean run through the second one, and uh, yeah, they're, they're lovely stages. They're like, you know, tricky, but like, that, that's what makes a good driver. Like, so uh, yeah, we're looking now to go out and we'll see, tidy ourselves up a bit. And um, even the second one there now is a bit messy in there. Like, so uh, yeah, we'll just have to tidy up our act a little bit and uh, see how it goes. A more positive start to this year's championship. Yeah, sure. Like, I, I think we done three or four events last year, and every event we made a silly mistake on nearly the first loop of stages. So. We're going all right now, but like I was conscious on the first one or the first couple, just not to make any mistakes. So we were safe, like we were grand, we were safe. The car is good, and and our notes were safe, and just drove to them, and yeah, we got through it. Conditions are very, very tricky out there. Ah, oh, they are like, and and there's certain parts of stages they come fine. Like the second stage is a few few good kilometres of good tar, and you you get stuck into that, and then sure it changes the complete mirror is looking back up at you so it's ah yeah it's tricky like and then obviously it started raining again now I suppose I think the weather was so we were all hoping I think it was going to dry up a bit later on. Gary incredible difficult conditions here this morning. Yeah it didn't seem as bad in recce uh, but the road seems to be very very shiny and slippy in places and even the shiny sections there's no grip and they're on about the last section on stage one and there's loads of grip through the dirt the dirty section but the, the road's rough underneath but we're just getting through, uh, we try something different now with tyres and see can we improve on our pace. Michael, you got caught out in conditions on stage one. Yeah, very tricky now. Um, we didn't even feel like we were overly late breaking, but just the conditions were lethal and came over then. We, we had nowhere to go but uh, backways into a wall, but it's very cos cosmetic and the lads nearly have it sorted here, so hopefully we'll get back out again for seat time. Johnny, you're second in uh, class 14, but very, very tricky conditions here this morning. Yeah, absolutely. Like you, you couldn't imagine how slippy it is out there. You know, we have a lot of stuff marked, shiny, shiny, and just it's it's worse. It's just 200 yards, 250 yards breaking early. Like it's it's, it's amazing how slippy it is. Top local crew, John Warren and Ruth Ann O'Connor, got as close to the road with this gorgeous bumper cam footage in there to be able to crawl a twin cam. You can really get a feel for the changeable road conditions the crews faced. Ireland's keen spectators lined stage three, anticipating more drama on the brutal back wancha that caught out a host of crews earlier in the morning. After losing a chunk of his lead on the last stage, could Sam Moffat and James O'Reilly reset their impetus at the front of the Mayo Stages rally pack? Moffat, who hadn't won a rally since the Kerry Winter Stages in 2021, opened the road, his rally to Hyundai treading through the narrow lanes of the North Mayo countryside. Seven point nine seconds quicker than his previous Brackwanshire benchmark, would it be enough to keep Cronin and Co behind? Cronin ensured he didn't make the same mistakes as the previous run through the fourteen point five kilometre test, but his KG effort was fourteen seconds slower than Moffat. 
The West Cork pilot threw caution to the wind on stage four, but in his bid to cut Moffat's ever-growing advantage, made too many mistakes and allowed his rival to take his third fastest time of the day. Still, Cronin's time through Ballon Tubber was within one-tenth of a second of Moffat's benchmark. Sam Moffat grabbed his fourth stage win on the next pass through Ballon Tubber to give him a comfortable 38.4 second lead over Cronin with two shorter stages to go. James Ford recorded a hat-trick of top three stage times between three and six. He survived this moment on a charge through the same Ballon Tubber corner that ended Damien Tourish's event. The Englishman was now third overall with two stages to go, but Rude getting stuck behind Josh Moffat's Citroen after it spun mid-stage upon a return via Super Rally rules. Tommy Doyle slipped behind Ford after stage four, albeit with only 1.3 seconds between them. Doyle's day came to an end on the next stage, however, when his Hyundai i20 ran out of road. Eddie Doherty followed Ford's charge up the field over Mayo's early afternoon stages. A big push over the second attempt on Ballantubber was only 4.6 seconds off Moffat's stage winning time and aided his progress from seventh up to fourth ahead of the final loop. The top five was completed by Aidan Ray after he settled down from a few hair-raising moments on stage four. Ray finished Mayo's sixth stage two seconds behind Doherty, who in turn was eight seconds behind third place Ford. Jason McSweeney was another man with one eye on Ford's final podium position. The Skoda-powered Cork crew were sixth overall, but less than three seconds behind Ray. David Guest had held the top 10 spot after stage 2, but his West Cork rally warm-up came to an early end on the next Brack Wancha test when his rally 2 Fiesta collided with a signpost and bent a rear suspension arm. A puncture on the same stage put Jason Mitchell out of top 10 contention with his polo eventually retiring on stage 6. The fight for two-wheel drive honours continued on stage three as Mark Alcorn found his mojo to extend his advantage over Jonathan Pringle by a further 5.7 seconds. John O'Dugan was fastest on the next stage by 4.9 seconds as the two-wheel drive contenders saw a new opportunity for Class 14 glory. Previous pace setter Alcorn was forced to stop on stage four after discovering his Mark II Escort had broken a throttle cable. Dugan's pace was threatening Pringle's top spot, but his task was to get much more difficult after Jonathan Pringle and Gary McPhillips received James Ford's rapid stage six time when their own attempts were halted following Tommy Doyle's accident. Dugan was now third in two-wheel drive with two stages to go, 6.4 seconds behind McPhillips and 25.7 seconds behind Pringle. Sam, you have a comfortable advantage with two stages remaining, but conditions are just really tricky and it's just hard to gauge your pace. Uh, it definitely is. We're trying to manage our, our pace, but uh, yeah, you're still having wee moments here and there and just trying to manage it. And you know, We have a bit of a better lead. We didn't want to slacken up there too much and happy enough we'll hopefully get through the last two stages now and just be sensible. Obviously, you're contesting the championship this year. It'll be, it'll be a great start to it. Yeah, look, it's a great start and then you, know, you have the added incentive for this bonus point on the last stage, I assume. And, uh, it's always there to try and go for it. We'll see. We better take the overall points, but uh, look at, looking forward to a great start of the year if we can get that far, but two difficult ones ahead. Daniel, after your morning dramas, you're probably happy enough with a safe second place with two stages remaining. Yeah, do you know, we, do you know that last stage was probably my most smoothest of the day, like, but do you know, we still can't let up, like, because James is flying it there on third, so yeah, we'll just see how we go. We, we just have to keep it neat and tidy in lots of places that can still you know you could fall in off the road somewhere so we'll have to keep it a good old pace now through the last two and hopefully we can get them through nice and cleanly.
Eddie, you'd be delighted with four position with two stages remaining? Yeah, look, so far so good. There's a lot of carnage out there so far. So, um, no, keep our nose clean and uh, get through the next two. So, uh, it's unfortunate them, them last two stages were cancelled. Um, but, look, we'll wait and see what happens next. John, it's a nice 19 second advantage in the two wheel drive. It's a strange sort of day. Yeah, it's strange there. That, like that, that loop there was was uh, treacherous, all right. And, and then John out there, I think, has got a nominal time. So, sometimes it goes foot with you and sometimes it goes against you. But it's just hard to know. It's drying up out there. So we don't know, do we maybe step it up, but manage the 19 seconds, I think. It's just hard to know what to do with that. James, from the reserve list now, you're lying third overall with two stages remaining. You still, Eddie Doherty's not that far behind either. No, yeah, it's going to be, it's only short two stages, last two stages, so we should be all right. But yeah, we'll see, it, you know, Eddie's a good guy, so we'll see how we get on. John, second in class 13, but more importantly, top local at the minute with two stages remaining. Yeah, that's look, we have our eyes on the local prizes, so we could push on. There's more left in us, you know, we're not having any moments or anything, but I think at this stage now with two to go, we'll play, play the sensible game. That's the plan. It's a really tricky event, isn't it? Like, grip levels are so inconsistent. Oh, unbelievable. That first stage is really challenging, I enjoy it, but yeah. there's just so much change in surface from one corner to another. You're trying to look ahead and see what the braking is like. It can be the difference of braking at 80 metres or 150 metres. And yeah, it's very challenging. Aaron, 15th overall, leading class 13. It's a good start to the year so far with two remaining. Yeah, not too bad. Yeah, happy enough so far. It's very tricky this morning and... Uh uh, it's drying up a wee bit now and drying it a bit more, but a lot of damage done this morning. We should probably just get to the finish now, you know what I'm saying? So, happy enough. Kevin, another great start to the Triton Showers Irish National Rally Championship. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you look here today, what a fantastic entry. Um, yeah, uh, the event hasn't been too kind to everyone, but yeah, like, you know, once you come to Mayo, you know what you're going to be getting. So, yeah, look, it's been great. You're obviously involved in the championship for a long number of years. It's good for brand image to be involved in such a popular championship, I'm sure. Absolutely. I mean, the, the, the good thing for us is that the locations move every year. So, like, you know, we get the brand awareness all over the country, which is an ideal fit for what we want. So, uh, yeah, look, we've been involved in the sport for decades at this stage. But, uh, yeah, look, it's, it's, it's just a good fit for us. Let's have a look at the class battles. Class 1 was topped by Cahill and Dara Mullins, who won each of the eight stages in their Honda Civic. Christopher Rose and Jason Murphy were the only other Class 1 crew to finish the event. As expected, the Class 2 battle went down to the wire as a bunch of future prospects lined up in a stunning array of Rally 4 machines. Dylan Eves and Ryan Farrell set the early pace in their Fiesta Rally 4, winning the first two stages. Craig Rahal and Connor Smith were never far away though and jumped ahead by 0.9 seconds on stage 4. And Dylan was putting the pressure on himself by this costly spin on stage 6. Eves responded straight away to move back into the lead with two stages to go before Rahal moved back ahead again by a stonking 8.1 seconds on the penultimate Clohens test. And just when it looked like Rahal had it in the bag, Eves set the fastest time on Rathoma's decider to grab a 3.4 second class win ahead of Rahal and third place Gareth Deasley and Oshin Joyce. Casey J. Coleman and Tommy Moffat were some of the Mayo casualties, though Moffat was able to return to the action and set a couple of top five rally four times. Tommy's wheel sheared off the hub though on this location on stage three. Jack Harris and Aaron O'Regan were the ones to beat in class 2A. They won all their stages in their Ford Fiesta R2T to seal a one minute 40 second victory over Aidan Kilkenny and Rosaline Kelly. In Class 3, Rory and Martin McGarrity took a start-to-finish victory in their Citroen DS3. Michael Ormond and Patrick King won the final stage in their Honda Civic to finish second in class, just under a minute behind McGarrity. Lloyd Hutchinson and Willie Fitzpatrick romped home to an eight-minute victory in Class 9. Their Mini Cooper topped the class ahead of Jason Mooney's Ford Puma and Dwayne Lally's Nissan Micra. In Class 10, Cal Sheridan and Cole Leonard enjoyed a good battle with Ollie Kearse for Class Honours. Sheridan's Vauxhall Nova finished on top, with Kearse settling for second ahead of Martin Colley's Peugeot 205.
A series of fastest times gave Sam Johnson a 9.7 second lead in Class 11F at Mayo's halfway point. Des Lyons responded on stage 6 to grab a 1 second lead in his Honda Civic. However, an informed Johnson stormed to a 14.6 second penultimate stage win that proved enough to seal Class 11F honours. Lyons finished in second position 12.9 seconds behind, with Damian Cullen completing the top three. Paul Crosby set Class 11 R's early pace on Mayo's slippery opener, but dropped behind Ben McIntyre's similar Toyota Starlet on stage three. 7.1 seconds separated the class's top three crews before McIntyre began to stretch ahead. A rapid time on Mayo's penultimate test edged Anthony Hand ahead of Crosby by 1.4 seconds before sealing the class's runner-up spot with the fastest time on the rally's finale. Ben McIntyre and Anthony McDonald had done enough on the preceding stages to cruise home to a 29.7 second Class 11 hour victory. Michael Conlon and James McEnany managed an impressive 3 minute Class 12 victory over Avian Russell and Richie Cleary. Justin Smith and Sean Mitchell had been Conlon's nearest challengers before they lost three minutes when they had to change a flat on stage four. They fought back to third though in class by the end of the rally. In class 13, Aaron McIntyre and Derry Long impressed aboard their Toyota Starlet. McIntyre scored a hat trick of stage wins straight away, including a second fastest two wheel drive time on stage three. McIntyre resisted a John Warren fight back to take an 18.9 second class win. Warren and co-driver Ruthann O'Connor were the top local finishers and were delighted to finish their local event. We jump in with John and Ruthann as they take us on a brave trip down the Mayo countryside. The pair also receiving the Margaret McGreal Award for top local finishers. Barry McLaughlin and Barry McBride nipped ahead of Aidan Burke and Pierce Tahini Jr. on the final stage to seal third in Class 13 by 1.2 seconds. Keith Jacob and Michael Corr secured a three and a half minute Class 15 victory in their Subaru Impreza over James McGreal and Patrick O'Hara's Mitsubishi. In the juniors, Kyle McDade and Connor Lappin quickly built a strong lead in their Honda Civic and held on to secure a 1 minute 28 second Class 16 win. Jason Wilkinson set a brace of fastest times over Mayo's final loop of stages, but it was too little too late to threaten McDade and had to settle for second. David Armstrong and Tyg Delaney were the sole finishers in Class 18, driving their historic Ford Escort RS 1800. Marty Toner and Ben Taggart were untouchable in Class 20, while Colin Flanagan won the Battle of the Mitsubishi Evos, finishing 35 seconds ahead of Trevor Bustard. John O'Dugan and Paul Lennon edged ahead of Gary McPhillips and into second in two-wheel drive on Mayo's penultimate test, holding a 6.7 second gap over McPhillips. Dugan set the fastest time over Clohans, eight and a half seconds up on two-wheel drive leader Jonathan Pringle, despite having an overshoot on the 10 and a half kilometre test. Pringle's lead was now down to 17.2 seconds and was cut to 6.9 on the final stage when Dugan put in another stomping time. Dugan though was left wondering what could have been had he been seeded higher up the field. But it was Pringle who claimed two wheel drive honours in Mayo and a well deserved top 10 finish overall. Gary McPhillips settled for third in two wheel drive and 12th overall after loitering between fourth and second in class 14 over Mayo's eight stages. 
Yeah, no, it's good. It's been a, quite a few years there. We're just trying to work out what, what it was there since we've won a two with drive like this and the conditions today was very tricky. So, yeah, very, very happy. What was the plan when you started today? Yeah, look at it. it was, look at it. Believing the tyres was one thing because just with the tyres will do it. Like, but And then just, just, just watch the road, sort of concentrate on the road and sort of reading the road as best we could and, and sort of keeping his, the, the momentum going, you know. Niall Maguire and Connor Foley slipped into a ninth place finish on Mayo's final stage. The National Rally veteran Citroen C3 suffered a misfire on Sunday's first stage, but the three-time national champion fought back to seal his first top 10 finish in two years. Maguire finished 42 seconds behind top place Citroen pilot Paul Barrett. Barrett and co-driver Dara Kelly's 8th place finish was enough to secure the top prize in Citroen's C3 Rally 2 trophy. Barrett had been 7th overall, but that position was snatched up by Gary Kiernan and John McCabe, who were flying over Mayo's final loop of stages in their Ford Fiesta Rally 2. Kiernan struggled to get to grips with the Fiesta in Sunday morning's treacherous conditions, but found some confidence when he dialed back his anti-lag. The former Ford Escort star found the right balance between power and drivability before storming through with a second and third fastest time on the final two stages to climb from ninth to seventh. Marty Toner was another to shine on Mayo's final loop. Such was Toner's pace behind the wheel of the rip-roaring Proton he was regularly catching cars ahead of him. A third and fourth fastest time on Clohans and Rathoma resulted in his best ever National Rally Championship result, sixth overall and fastest non-Rally 2 car. It looked like Mayo would have a four-way fight for third place ahead of its final loop, with Jason McSweeney, Aidan Ray and Eddie Doherty all eyeing up James Ford's spot on the podium. Ford gifted the position away on Mayo's penultimate Clons test, however, when his Citroen slipped off the road and spoiled what had been a promising drive for Ford and Shanks. Eddie Doherty was waiting to pick up Ford's pieces, but he almost threw it away on the same corner as Ford. The Kilkenny driver spun around and let Aidan Ray move within 1.7 seconds of his third position. Jason McSweeney entered the final stage 6.4 seconds further back and he had to settle for 5th overall in the end, resisting some last minute pressure from Toner behind. Doherty finally put his pace together over the final stage to grab a well-timed first stage win of the day. His third place finish is yet another indicator of what's to come as he gets to grips with Rally 2 machinery. Uh, I suppose we kind of made a bit of a boo-boo there on the second last one we spun, but um, I'd say we lost 10 seconds there, but I think we kind of showed our pace then on the last one getting the quickest time. Um, and Sam Moffat told me I robbed the bonus point off him, so that kind of helped as well. So, um. Aidan Ray had no answer to Doherty's speed, making a mistake on the final stage, but could take plenty of positives from his best National Rally Championship result since 2018. In the race for the Mayo Stages Rally victory, Daniel Cronin and Donica Burke set the fastest time over the eight stage rally's penultimate test to ensure he was in prime position to steal the win should Sam Moffat make an unlikely slip up on that final test. There was no such mistake from the experienced Moffat though as Cronin cruised home on Mayo's decider to take a strong runner-up finish on the opening round of the one-day series. The crest, 680, 6 right plus again, 60, middle over crest for 5 left over crest to the house, shiny, 40, 5 right over crest at the wall, 240, middle over crest breaking, 6 left, only 80, shiny slot, tidy, square right minus. Slippy, four left plus Daniel, a great result. Yeah, hard to believe it after stage one this morning to finish second. Uh, uh, no, absolutely over the moon. So, Joe, be a good spin home now uh, and a, a good week, Joe. Nice, nice to get a good result. I was just saying, compared to last year, do you know, after round one, we were, do you know, a bit disappointed, but no. Great sir. Sam Moffat barely backed off on Mayo's Rathoma Decider, missing out on his fifth fastest time of the day by just 0.6 seconds. Not that Moffat cared, he had taken his first national rally victory since the 2018 Donegal Harvest Rally and by a tremendous 43 and a half seconds. The Hyundai duo of Moffat and O'Reilly didn't put a wheel out of shape all day on tricky stages and demanding conditions that were likened to a winter Galway rally on steroids. 
Moffat has lined up a full year in the Triton Showers National Rally Championship and kicks off the campaign with a perfect start to his hopes of a second National Rally title. Yeah, look, it's a great start to the championship. Um, yeah, I was talking this morning, that's for sure. Uh, good battle with everyone and you know Daniel held us positive to the end and just looking forward to the next round, which is the Home Rally Monaghan. The championship is great, there's such diversity in each round. Yeah, look, we're going from very different roads, very different stages, and the great thing with the National is you're not going to knowledgeable areas, so even to go to Fermanagh, I don't know the stages, and on to Burr then, and look, it is a championship, it's good to get the points, and uh, yeah, let's see what it brings, so we have a good positive start, so it keeps the interest up. I was trying to think, the last rally I won, I remember one here, maybe in 18 or 19 with Declan, and I think I won a Forest with Sam then, but yeah, I had a good sabbatical now, and only, only it was him rang me, I probably wouldn't have come back now to be honest. So. You're glad you did? Ah, yeah, yeah, look, we get on well and uh, it's enjoyable, we enjoy the rally and it's good pace and good racing. That's it from an action-packed round one of the Triton Showers National Rally Championship, the Mayo stages. We're going to catch you for round two, the Monaghan stages, in a few weeks' time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 